Someone made a really, really interesting comment the other day. They were talking about like the keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing when it comes to video games and how do you look at your tech and how do you look at your gear and think to yourself, I'm just gonna stick to what I have. It's a very good question. I think it's a very, very valid one. Um, I know that I've fallen victim. I mean, the reason why I bought the Ally, the reason why I bought the Legion Go was because I didn't want to miss out the whole FOMO thing. We've talked about FOMO before, but today we're gonna talk about it again. The whole FOMO thing of like, oh, I want to make sure I'm a part of the conversation. And as someone who, um, the, my whole career, I guess, was built on relevance, I've had to reason with some of those decisions and be like, well, am I really purchasing this because I want it, I need it, or am I purchasing this because I don't want people to think that I'm behind? Well, I think more about that in general and just what I want to, you know, instill in just my family alone and how I want to go about um, showing my daughter and my son how, you know, you're supposed to react to the whole FOMO thing, new things coming out. I want to do a little, you know, gut check and how how am I supposed to react to these things especially because my job kind of pertains to staying relevant well first is I mean we've seen a shift here in the past few months of changing to my own way of doing things and kind of saying you know what forget you guys I'm just gonna do it the way that I want to do it I mean and I think that that is that I mean that's very much so me my whole life I've been that way I've been kind of marching to the beat of my own drum even in making coffee you know like this is unnecessary, right? Let's be honest. This all, this whole rigmarole is pretty extra. Sure, it sets myself apart from the rest, but no one asked for this. Um, and I understand that, but it's, it, it plays into this idea, I feel, of doing what you like because you like it, not because someone else told you that you're going to like it, right? I know that I've talked at length about this guy because I'm a huge fan of this and I've even suggested that some of you consider making the purchase and making the switch over to that from any other device. And I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to persuade you because of any sort of personal gain I have, right? Sure, being a deck daddy is the most spectacular thing that exists. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, but you know, being a part of something is just more fun rather than anything else. But this isn't going to solve anyone's problems, right? Having a Steam Deck won't solve anyone's problems. If you have boredom problems, maybe, but there's a deeper root to anything. I mean, let me give you an example. I personally have been someone who has never, and I repeat, never enjoyed the Apple Watch. I never have. And so my dad got the Apple Watch Ultra. Then he was going to get the Ultra 2. My good friend Rick got the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Just about everyone I know on YouTube who has Apple Watches has the Apple Watch Ultra 2. So what did this dumb daddy do? He went out and got the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Traded in my Garmin Phoenix 7X for it. Because I thought, hey, let's do the Apple Watch again. Sure, there's conveniences that exist with the Apple Watch. You get to use voice commands whenever you want. If you don't have your phone on you, you get to you know, have a bunch of different things when it comes to the way that the watch functions, but I've never liked the Apple Watch at all. And so I had this thing since launch, and now it's up for sale. I don't like it, I never have. I got it because other people told me, or showed, not showed, but they had it. And I was like, oh, I don't wanna miss out on this new thing, and I wanna be, hey, look at me, I have the Apple Watch Ultra 2. You wanna know what watch I have right now? Not that it matters, but I kind of like it. I have the Garmin Instinct 2X, and I had to get the, as <laughs> silly as it may sound, I had to get the Tactical Edition, so this has like, it's, you can use it with night vision goggles, because I wanted it to match my Steam Deck loadout, so my watch and my Steam Deck match, but that's for me. That's not for anyone else. Who cares? This is, this is, looks like a, freaking G-Shock, it doesn't matter. Why did I get this over a G-Shock? Because I do like the information that Garmin gives me. But this d it doesn't mean anything. And I think that, you know, even in looking at this kind of stuff, the FOMO that exists, you, you pick hobbies 
that you really care and cherish and enjoy. And it helps you kind of leave the FOMO space, if I'm being honest with you. I picked mangas because I started to want to read. I want, I've always wanted to watch anime, but I never wanted to sit through it, I guess. I do so much with screen time already, and I wanted to escape the whole screen time thing. And so I was like, well, I want to enjoy these stories. And when I was talking to my buddy Steven, he's like, dude, you know that like just about every anime that's worth its salt started as a manga. And also um, the mangas are just better when it comes to the information, right? And I was like, really? I know that's a debate that some people may have, but I personally was like, okay, cool. Well, then I'm just gonna read the mangas. It gets me less screen time. It gives me more stillness in my life, which I think is really important to have stillness. And it allows me to enjoy a thing that I've been wanting to enjoy for a really, really long time. And I don't have to worry about FOMO with mangas because they themselves are just books. This hobby is incredible, right? Video games, I'm trying to do the same thing. I really am. I'm really trying to lean into that. And when someone asks the question, how do you deal with the whole FOMO thing with video games? It's really leaning into doing what you like and like playing what you love and sticking to that through and through. Because when it comes to this hobby, this is a very personal hobby. No one can make this, no one can make any decision for you. You need to make the decisions for yourself. And when it comes to new hardware, especially since we're gonna be seeing something from PlayStation and Xbox soon, the question therein lies, is that new hardware going to further your enjoyment of video games? Do you feel that right now that your PlayStation 5 or your Series S or X are limiting the very enjoyment that you want to have with this hobby? And if the answer is yes, then maybe the consideration of the next would be the right thing to do. I know for me, when it came to my PlayStation and Xbox, my gaming experience, even my Nintendo Switch, I was feeling limited by my enjoyment. Nintendo Switch, having a aged library of games of which I've spent plenty of time in almost the most amount of time I could spend in those libraries and those games. PlayStation and Xbox requiring specific location to enjoy their libraries. And so I had switched to this. And now why this over others? Well, I've mentioned before that the reason why I chose this was simplicity. The others grant me access to more things. I'd be able to play my Xbox games arguably better than I can on this, on something like the Ally and the Legion Go or the MSI Claw, anything that's a real Windows 11 handheld. but. I don't have many, if any, that I really wanna play at all. So that didn't do anything for me. But just having this as is, what it does is it, it's the, the period, the exclamation point in the sentence, which is, I play video games. And I think that's a really huge thing in a, in a way that we need to kind of shift our mindsets when it comes to any of our hobbies. But video games, especially because it's a technology-based interaction, Video games are based on, you know, whatever the next thing is. And when you buy the first one, you're like, well, how long? Some of you right now are going, I'm not going to buy the OLED because I want the, Switch, the Steam Deck 2. To which I would say, sure, we don't have any information about the Steam Deck 2. We have no projection. We have some statements made by Valve saying that it's not close. We have a beautiful device here, the OLED, that does a great job. And there were questions about, should I upgrade to the OLED? And I would say only yes for a few reasons. One is if you have the extra additional disposable income, you can sell off your LCD and you're willing to put a couple extra bucks towards this. Sure, maybe. Two, you feel like your visual experience is not lackluster, but not, not even limited damaging. You're like, this is just not, you don't want to play your games because they don't look good. Okay. Fair. This will solve that visually. And lastly, because this doesn't have a tremendous amount of performance increase. I mean, it does have some, it does. It, I, I don't know how they did it, but they did. The last, and I, I mean, the very last thing is, do you want better or need better battery life? Cause this, whew, you're doing great with it. Honestly, you are. And so those are the only things, but you look at it from an objective standpoint. Because on paper, if someone was to look at this device, they would not know that this is an OLED. 
Sure, when I turn it on, maybe, but if they were to look at my device right here, they would be like, oh, he just has a Steam Deck. I would have to peel this back and show off this orange button for anyone to know that this is an OLED. And I personally don't even care if people know this is an OLED. I'm not doing that for them. I have this because it's a device that I want to enjoy my video games with. And I think that really is the most important thing when it comes to choosing and using and playing video games or any of our hobbies or even doing other things. So I'll give an example in a second, which is do it for you, dude. Do it for you, right? And making decisions for yourself is the number one way that you're going to maintain a hobby that is going to be ex exponentially more enjoyable, but also not worry about this whole FOMO nonsense. Yes. I talk at length about being a deck dad and you might be sitting there being like, I know I don't have a deck. I really want, I don't want to miss out. You're missing out on a joke. If we're being honest, right? Our lives aren't any better because we have steam decks. My life is not better because of this. I'm able to play video games unlike I did before. And I am enjoying that. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is that I have a family. And so all this is, is a really cool toy, a really great toy. But I really think that the, one of the most important things you can do is do something for yourself. And so the example I was gonna give is right now I'm going on, I'm undergoing some crazy transformation. At least that's the hopes. I have been working out and doing fitness for a long time, okay? I grew up very overweight. From young on, I was overweight. I maxed out at 276 pounds. 5'10", 276. I probably was like 5'8", or 5'9", 276. I was fat, okay? It wasn't a fun life, very self-conscious, had a hard time uh, with girls, uh, the, whole, the whole nine, everything that comes with being fat in high school, okay? When high school ended, I said enough was enough. I can't deal with this anymore. I want to change my life. And so I had stumbled upon CrossFit, the 300 movie came out, everyone was talking about this CrossFit method thing, so I started doing it in my garage. And from there, I got hooked, lost a bunch of weight, got into writing, uh, track bikes at the time. Um, it was fixies, got really into it, started racing, doing that kind of stuff. I would run, I would ride like over a hundred miles a week on a regular basis, commuted everywhere, got rid of my car, just rode bikes, right? And I ended up losing hundred pounds. So I've been in the fit, I've been, and then I got addicted to fitness. I loved it, left college, right? I was going to college for music, got certified in um, being a CrossFit level one coach and started coaching CrossFit. And I coached CrossFit for like seven or eight years, okay? In that, I had gone back to school, to seminary, to be a pastor. It didn't end up working out. I thought that God wanted me in ministry, and I realized that it was me wanting to be on stage and people looking at me, and God's like, that's not what you're meant to be doing. You are good at talking, but this not up here. And so it didn't work, okay? So fast forward to right now. I've spent my whole life in the fitness world. Never have I ever looked like I did. <laughs> because I've always struggled with my relationship with food and with my consistency in hyper, hypertrophy based training. Performance, great. Lifting, great. For my size, I can lift some heavy weights, great. But I never looked it. Super self-conscious about it on, on a regular basis, even to this day, but I've never looked it. So three days ago, I decided, not three days ago, it was last week, but three days ago, I started a 90 day fitness transformation, got a coach, got the whole thing. And I have committed to tracking every bite I eat, working out uh, however long I'm supposed to for the next 90 days. I'm hoping to completely transform myself and have a physical appearance that's completely different and in line with what I believe uh, the hard work that I put in matches, right? Is it important? Not to anyone else. It's not to you. Will I come up here shirtless? and do a cup? Absolutely not. No one needs to know what it looks like underneath my extra large shirts. It's only for me, 100% only for me. I'm married, I have children, there's no other person out there I'm trying to impress. My wife likes the fact that I work hard at keeping myself healthy. The outcome doesn't matter. I eat well, I strive to keep my performance high so that I can keep up with my kids and outrun them for the longest amount possible. She doesn't care if I have visible anything, right? I want to once in my life see a physical transformation that I believe is big enough and then from there, whatever. And so I've decided to go through this crazy thing, not because I wanna look like someone else, but because for me, I want to match the a specific thing that I wanted, okay? 
And so I'm doing that. And I think that that kind of mindset of doing stuff for yourself, not being selfish, right? Not being like, I'm doing this for me because I deserve it. Doing things because you enjoy it. Choosing to play video games on a deck, an ally, an Xbox, a PC, a Nintendo, a re retro car, doesn't matter. Doing it for you. Should you go out and buy this thing because I bought it? No. You know when the last time I turned this on was? Great question. I don't even know. Because it was an impulse buy. I thought it was great. It was super fun to use. But I'd rather just do it on this. This does everything I want. This is the Swiss army knife of what I need it to be. And as someone who wants less and less things and wants to interact more and more with my hobbies, I am trying to cut away every single thing that gets in the way or is completely redundant or unnecessary in order for me to participate in my hobbies. One, because financially it just makes more sense for me to have one device that I have to purchase stuff for rather than four. And two, less options means more time to play. The very reason why I wear the same thing every day is for that. I wear the same pair of jeans, I wear the same hoodie, I have a couple of the hoodies, and that is because what I want is to be able to not have to think about it. Physical appearance, as I stated before, is something I struggle with, so I found an outfit that I think looks good, and so I'm just gonna stick with it and not worry about it. Don't have to worry about this, that. I wear the same black Vans every single day. The only thing that changes is my socks or my underwear, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Now, I say all these things because I'm trying to give multiple examples of the same idea, which is FOMO exists, uh, being self-conscious about your gear, being self-conscious about your look, looking out there and seeing other things and being like, I want that because they have that is very much so a real thing. But I think what you should do is you should have a character profile of yourself. You should create your character. You should look at yourself and be like, okay, who am I? What do I wanna be? What gear do I want on me? And how do I wanna spec out so I can encounter everything and anything in between without doing other things? Figure out what build you wanna be. Me, I am a minimalist build, okay? I have one bag, I have my, I've upgraded my bag. I had the 511 Rush 24 because it was in uh, multicam. I love multicam and I love that bag and that bag was smaller and I'm like, oh, everyone has this bag. It looks cooler. It didn't work for me. Got in my head. You know what bag I have? I used to have the GORUCK GR2, but it wasn't big enough. I have the 511 Rush 72. It's like a 52 liter bag. It's massive. It looks like a backpacking bag, but it carries all of my kids' stuff. It carries all of my stuff. It carries my water bottles, my kids' water bottles, my Steam Deck, everything I needed to carry. Do I look somewhat ridiculous carrying around a giant pack? Yeah. Does it do everything I want it to do? Yes. Do I feel over encumbered when I use it? Absolutely not. It has hip straps. It comes down to the build you want to be. Who are you? What build are you? And at the end of the day, when you build a character in whatever, when you spec out Cloud, when you spec out your character, you don't go, what did my buddy spec? I want to do what they spec because it's your game. It's your life. It's your way of playing. And in this whole thing, that's exactly what we're doing. Sure. There's a better sword you can use because it's two-handed, but you prefer single-handed swords because you're just more quick with it and you like the different things that you have. Right here. Do I have a better optimized device that I could get? Absolutely, but I prefer this because the usability and the equipment that I want to load myself out, this matches the play style of my life. And I think that's really like huge. And I wish I would have thought of this earlier so I didn't talk for like 20 minutes before I got to it. But hey, this is what these cups are about. Caffeinate, let it soak into your brain and then talk more and more and more. So I ask you, what is your loadout? What is your life loadout? And have you been looking at other people to adjust your loadout because you wanna be accepted? Or are you willing to confidently say, this is my choice, these are my things? I don't care what you have because we're both trying to succeed at the same goal and that is completion. We want 100% life. And in 100%ing life, we want to make sure that the loadout we have is something we're comfortable playing with. There's my video game reference for the day. I'm going to go to the coffee shop with my kids, enjoy another cup of coffee, see my best friend who's moving away forever now for one last time, and that's about it. All right. Well, enough from me. This is a, this was a fun one. I feel like I was more in my stride. Cool. Please comment everything below and buy some merch. And as always, 
Happy gaming.